here we, here we go. Go, 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 go. Media cast. And open oh, this here. Welcome to another episode of the Media Cast here for the Funkit Pod. Glad you could make it once again. Um, let's talk about all things media. What happened this past week and the media. And I'm not stopping with what I did the last few weeks because, well, the news don't stop. So why would we stop, right? So there's still a coup in Myanmar. The military government junta um, is still in charge. And they're cracking down more and more on the media. So nothing has changed in fact, things are getting worse, more people die, more people being abducted. So check out the hashtag what's happening in Myanmar to really get a grasp of what's happening there right now because it is no joke. It's really serious. And I mean, media outlets are being shut down, are shutting down, reporters are being arrested, um, assaulted. Normal people, obviously, as well. So it's not only reporters and journalists. Just because you talk media doesn't mean it's only media people, right? So if they even crack down on media people who usually report from war zones everywhere, right? Then you can imagine how they actually treat the normal people. So follow this. Um, yeah, again, the military dictatorship right now tries to censor everything, obviously. So uh, keep an open eye and open mind for this because it's really insane what's happening. And we're working on something here. So um let's we, we might be able to get some some voices and some news out of Myanmar um, fingers crossed but for now I uh, keep an open mind because this is really insane what's happening right, right there right now so um everybody should be aware of this uh also what we see right now I'm already scrolling through my news um I think TikTok was in the news for actually banning accounts in Myanmar because they are too brutal so soldiers in Myanmar are using social media to um intimidate but also like to just show off their brutality like what they're doing with people so there was a video of a soldier randomly um approaching a civilian um and making him crawl like an animal on all fours just because he can apparently that's a thing amongst the soldiers in Myanmar to do with like civilians what uh, but there are way more way worse videos on TikTok and other social media platforms where you can see people getting actually hurt or worse and TikTok starting to ban those accounts, which of course fair enough, right? Um, the question: How 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 much should social media inter interfe interfere, intervene? Well, in this case, a lot. <laughs> um, there is no freedom of speech, so if you're hurting someone, you're not supposed to show. You're not supposed to hurt someone. If you hurt someone, showing off on social media, what? And actually, you should be prosecuted for this. You should go to jail or, or even worse, right? Um, so, all right, TikTok is doing this. I'm assuming other platforms are doing this as well. Um, that's just insane. And it also gives you, I don't know, an overview of like the, how the human mind works, of human psychology, right? Like, why why would they do that? And I'm not going to spend like all 20 to 30 minutes that, that, that we have here in our, our podcast together on I know hating on the Myanmar soldiers or anything like this, but it's just insane, right? How can you treat other human beings like this? So, um, yeah, be aware, keep an open mind, read up on the news, what's happening there right now. And again, working on something here to hopefully give you a bit more details on like how did this happen, what's supposed to happen or what, what's supposed to happen next or what are the different options that Myanmar has right now. Um, but as I said, I don't only want to talk about this because you probably hear not only to hear about Myanmar, which is still very important and go check it out. That's why it's like my first story for the past four weeks. But of course, we also talk about other things in the media. And quite frankly, a thing that got way more attention than the coup in Myanmar was the interview that Ma that, 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 that uh, Harry and Meghan did with uh, Oprah, right? We didn't talk about it last week because it was just just coming out. So Meghan and um, Harry the sit sit down uh, interview with Oprah. Hilarious commentary by Aussie Man Review, by the way. If you haven't checked it out yet, check it out on YouTube. Aussie Man Reviews, the Oprah interview, very funny. Um, but it also showcased one thing to me, and and while it doesn't matter on which side you are, whether you're like pro-royals in, in the United Kingdom, whether you're pro-Meghan and Harry, it just showed like how 
important the media is or what a, what a huge role the media is playing in, in how we perceive Meghan, how we perceive Harry, what we think about the royal family and so on, right? There are lots of people hating on her for like, oh, she's just acting. Others are like very sympathetic saying, oh, poor her and the like. Um, one thing, no matter which side we're on or if we don't even care, because quite frankly, I couldn't care less um, about the royal family in the, in the United Kingdom. But this shows, again, the, the influence that the media has, right? And we saw that way back when, when Diana, with Diana, when Diana died, but also before when she had like her affair, apparently, um, and the like, right? When she met this other guy, Dodi Alfayette, I believe, right? We saw the media was everywhere and this media being everywhere and trying to put a spin on everything, right? This is... Well, understandable because you want clicks and views and sales and whatnot. But we always forget or we seem to forget or we seem to not care that there are actual human beings on the other side. Right? So this is something that is really something that becomes more and more visible to me. Um, the more we analyze those things, the more we look at those things. And it's really sad like that. We haven't learned anything, right? It, it happened. It happened with the same kind of in the same kind of setting theme, so to speak. Right? It happened way back when with, with Diana, and she became a victim of media, but also royal family pressure and so on. And now we almost saw a similar thing happening again. Luckily, I mean, if you believe all the accounts, uh, Harry and Meghan said, "Okay, that's it." Um, Again, by the way, I'm not on their side. I'm, I don't think they should be running around whining like how hard their life is and like, oh my god, we don't have, we don't have uh, private security for us anymore. You can go buy some. Yeah, you live in a in a free villa. Uh, I think Tyler Perry gave them like a, one of his villas to stay in Hollywood. So I mean, <laughs> you don't have to complain. But just seeing how media media pressure but also then how the whole royal family thing plays out and they are apparently that they haven't learned anything from it it's just the biggest takeaway from me um crazy then also at all those those um things in regards to racism how they thought about the baby and i like to you you just shake your head you're like what what 2021 really still weird so um i also wonder why they keep them around to be honest uh, but that's not my place to talk about so uh, you guys do you, but from a media point of view, very, very interesting. Also interesting to see like how extreme the media takes sides, right? Because only if you take extreme sides, you get a reaction, either for you or against you. If you're somewhere in the middle, like, yes, they said something smart, they said, but then let's find a consensus. You don't find anyone. You don't, you don't find the hardcore support. Yeah, you want to have extreme opinions because with extreme opinions, you get extreme reactions, either for you, support, or against you. doesn't matter. You just want extreme opinions. And we will have a video coming up, a podcast um, on moral panics, which is why do the news, does the news media work with like panic-inducing headlines and so on. So we will, we will discuss this here on the channel as well. Um, but basically, the news media wants extreme reactions because only then do they make actual money. So... Don't fall for that. Don't click on all the clickbait. Um, <laughs> yeah, make up your own mind if you're even into it or just ignore it, just like what I'm going to do from now on after we talked about this. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Well, we saw, I saw something interesting that uh, Tinder, not that, my, not that I'm on there, but that Tinder um, is w aiming on adding background checks, at least in the US for now, uh, where it's apparently easier to ac access public records and when it comes to, to background checks. So... The match group that owns Tinder um, says they are looking into uh, background checks ac across all their platforms. So I think Match also owns OkCupid, for example, I believe, and 75 other of those dating platforms. So they're looking into like implementing the background check feature to all of them. Yay! So hopefully less predators. <laughs> Who knows? Um, what else did we have in social media? Well, in UK... Um, the government came out and warned influencers that I think like around 70% of them or so, they are breaching the rules, the ad rules. Meaning if you run ads, if you're an influencer and you run ads on social media, you're supposed to say in a paid advertisement or paid partnership or whatever, right? Apparently 70 something percent in the UK aren't doing this. 
So and now the government came out and said, like, hey, guys, we know what you're doing. Um, if you keep doing this, we're going to take some action. And I think it's the first time that the government said this loud, loudly, like in that manner. So that is, I believe, very interesting. So if you're an influencer, make sure that you say, like, paid partnership and so on. Otherwise, the UK government and probably others going to follow suit soon because they could make money out of this, right? They're just going to sue you because you posted something that's an ad and you didn't declare it as an ad. And then they sue you and you have to pay money and they take your money. So be aware of this. Um, what else did we have in the news? Well, <laughs> it's not really newsworthy, but I found it funny that Intel has a new advertisement and they have like, remember this, I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. This advertising from way back when like the PC guy with the glasses and, and the, the, the shirt and then the Mac guy was like the cool Mac guy. Yeah. So now Intel has, the I'm, a, I'm a Mac guy into like an ad for PCs. It's just kind of funny. Um, this also shows very well what happens when your contract expires. So if you're working, if you're in a media agency or something like this, marketing agency, and you're working with um, influencers, for example, that's one issue that could uh, that, that could come up, right? So you're working with someone, then the contract expires, they don't extend it, it's too expensive or whatnot. And then after the non-compete clause, uh, this influencer then works with the competitor. Could happen, yeah, happened here on a very big scale, which is just kind of funny. I mean, it's not, not terrible for Apple or whatever, but it's just kind of funny. It's actually kind of fun because you remember those, I'm a Mac and I'm a PC, those, ad 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 those ads from back then. Okay, what else did we have? We saw what I mentioned last week, now coming actually slowly into fruition, that Clubhouse is pushing that accelerator program to make you influencers on Clubhouse. So if you aren't there yet, and I'm recording here on, well, on a Mac and an Apple computer, but not on an Apple device here. Um, so if you aren't on an iPad, iPhone or whatever, and you're not on Clubhouse yet, uh, you better hurry if you want to be a Clubhouse influencer um, because they are, well, they're pushing it now. Okay, what I found very interesting in the news, um, not with Clubhouse, uh, was that Alibaba was told by the Chinese government to sell the media assets. So Alibaba holds lots of media assets as well, right? As for example, the South China Morning, Morning Post, I believe. And now the government said, um, Alibaba, I think that's too much now. You should really, you should really sell them because uh, you have too much influence on what people think, and that doesn't reflect good on you and on us. <laughs> so you should get rid of that. I don't think they're gonna sell it. I mean, they're gonna sell it, but they're gonna sell it to like some holding that's still affiliated with them. I'm, I'm rather sure about this. Um, so that they, it just they wanna look better in the public eye, of course. When it comes to media, we saw uh, also a completely different story that the NFL, the National Football League, um, you know, where they throw like the thing that's not a ball. Um, they inked a new media deal, which, and let me look at my notes, for 2023 to 2033 with US broadcasters, and it will bring them uh, more than $100 billion for 11 seasons. $100 billion for the rights of showing you a sport on TV where people throw something that's not a ball, but they call it ball. <laughs> Lots of money. It's crazy how much money is is involved in uh, in sports. Soon here on the podcast on the channel we will have a special on esports and things like this. So um, there's also lots of money in there, by the way. So uh, stay tuned for this. I just found this very interesting because it's just such a huge number for well the broadcasting rights and then it comes with advertisement and so on. So that's going to be interesting like to see how they try to make up this money because i mean if you spend that much money you need to be sure that you can make much more money out of this right um we also saw something sad of course uh, of course unfortunately another shooting in the u.s in, Atl in atlanta was it um and now there's lots of outrage um not about the shooting but yes hopefully about the shooting thoughts and prayers <laughs> but how the media portrayed the shooting and this is now again very interesting um, to me because what I said earlier with like with like um, Megan and Harry and so on is also true here. So and you would think that like a dr drama, like something dramatic like this, right? Like you, it would unite people. But as we see very often, it doesn't. And it's not a dig on the US in particular. Well, it is because those mass shootings seem to particularly happen there. But I mean, this divisiveness happen, happens everywhere, right? So, but now we can see that, for example, 
lots of left-wing uh, news outlets, I think CNN and Washington Post and the like, which is owned by Amazon, right? Um, they're running lots of stories about um, like how that's a problem with like, gun control and so on. I'm not dis disagreeing, by the way. Um, uh, but then the right-wing outlets like Fox and so on are saying like, hey, okay, you have like 20 articles now on like, gun control, like Uh, you're just using the situation right now, but then the right wing doesn't talk about it at all. They're just making it look like it was, I don't know, this, this lone lunatic again and so on. So again, extreme positions to get extreme reactions, right? So that's the same thing here that we see with like the like Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, but now of course on a more dramatic scale in my opinion because life's lost. Uh, but even then, when you would think The media would be like, hey, guys, we need to come together. We need to fix this problem. They're like, no, extreme left, extreme right. The more extreme we are, the more extreme our support will be or the hate doesn't matter, the more reactions we get. And that's all they are out for. Those are reaction. Can I say that on YouTube or in the podcast reaction horse? That's just that's just all the news outlets are by now. And it's freaking annoying. It's like, you know, back then when 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 like news media journalism began like it was supposed to be like holding up the mirror to society like journalists were like the gatekeepers were like the ones to look into like what's wrong what's right something's not right we have to tell the people so that we can change it we can fix it that's what reporters in Myanmar try right now for example and they go to jail for that or even worse yeah and those idiots like in the US but also of course in Germany where I'm from or like everywhere They're just trying to to divide the, the the country, the audience, because the more divided we are, the more extreme our thoughts are, the more extreme the support will be, and the more reactions they get. And that's all that matters for them. It's the reactions and the money that comes with it, the clicks, right? Oh, I almost said the effort, and not I don't mean funk it in this case. So, what to do is is is. One thing that I want to talk about on a, on a clubhouse, actually, rather soon with some of my students, um, how do we fix journalism? How do we fix the media? Um, that should be interesting. I hope uh, I will announce it here before we do it, like a week before or so, to, to get hopefully some, some more people involved here because, I mean, we can't fix it like this, obviously, but there, something has to change, right? We, we can't just follow this all the time. So... I'm getting really, as you can see, aggravated uh, about this. Uh, so let's just leave it with this in, in this regard. Um, yeah, don't fall for this divisiveness of either left or right. Yeah, check, I don't know, get as much information as you can, make up your own mind. Don't just follow one of them blindly. Um, yeah, I lost for words right now. I was about to explain the media theory behind this because sometimes on, on this podcast what I try is like explain the media theory behind it. Um, we quickly also dove into this last time. Like one of the theories involved, I'm just making a shot because I'm still mad. Uh, one of the theories here is the two-step flow theory, right? Which means I don't get all my information um, by myself and make up my own mind. I get the information from someone that I trust is what, what we mentioned in the last podcast and last media cast. And um, so I trust those people, that person, that anchor, that channel, whatever, to give me the information in a way that makes sense to me and that I can easily understand. And of course, all those outlets are adding their agenda, uh, yeah, CNN, Fox, whatever, ARD in Germany, uh, and so on, they all have their agenda. Um, and of course, they try to spin the news in a way that's beneficial for them, for their agenda, for the stakeholders and the like. And then that's the problem when it becomes too divisive, left, right. And so on. But again, this is just way too accurating right now. I'm, I'm way too mad at this. Um, ideally, news media would be would help us to make the world a better place. But right now, news media leads to the world definitely not being a better place. And you, me, everyone in the media is should really change that. Hmm. Having that said, <laughs> let's not end on let's not let's try to not end on a on a very sad note. Um, two more things. One is um the, well the last piece of news I read before I started this video was that social media right now platforms are going to war for online talent. Meaning, apparently there's um 
there's a huge demand for creative online talent. And so if you are successful on one platform, another platform wants you to, and they, they're willing to shill out quite a lot of money right now. So if you're, you're putting work into becoming successful on one platform, another platform might be like, hey, you, you're trending right now. You're doing something cool. Maybe come over here. So this might be something you want to look into. I wouldn't bet, all my wouldn't bet my house or all the money on it, right, to become like an influencer or something like this. I'm not saying this. Please don't. Um, but it's interesting to see that social media platforms are also kind of, kind of desperate right now for actual good content, um, which I find interesting. And then the last thing, because I always have like podcasts, su suggestions or I like here, um, this time, what I would like to suggest, because next week we're going to talk about it, so this time what I would like to suggest for you guys to, to check out is the latest podcast, the latest Flagrant 2 podcast, actually. Remember last week I was ha hating on Andrew Schultz. Um, this time I'm suggesting, I'm, rec I'm recommending it. Andrew Schultz had a podcast on cryptocurrency with like the famous crypto guru, P Pompliano, whatever, I don't know. Um, so check this out. It was very funny. Flagrant 2, always very funny. Flagrant 2 um podcast with i want to say mike i don't know pompliano um jake whatever check out the flagrant two with the cryptocurrency guru um funny and very informative i believe uh, so check this out and because next week we might talk about cryptos and nfts and so on um as there are lots of questions coming in in this regard all right so that's it for me for this week with the media cast Still mad. Uh, I'm hope we can have a discussion on like how to fix the media rather soon because the media is such an awesome tool, such an awesome, such an awesome space, place to be. It's really sad to see where it's going and what's what's been done to it. So, well, let's let's make a change. Let's take a take a look in the mirror and make this change. See you next time. <laughs>